Now imagine this. You're a casual Monster Hunter fan and you're just chilling. When suddenly, you've been transported back to December 2010. A new title for the PlayStation Portable has just been released. And look at that, it's Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, an awesome addition for the third generation of the series. Completely elated that you've miraculously stumbled upon the release of a new Monster Hunter game, you get yourself a PlayStation Portable, you order yourself Portable 3rd, and by that I mean overseas because that game never released in the West, or you just emulate it like me and countless other people, you fire up this classic handheld console from the 2000s, pop in the discs, and you've just noticed something. This handheld thing only has one analog stick. Now you have only been playing Monster Hunter since Generations Ultimate up to now, and since then you have been accustomed to having a controller with two joysticks. Whether the games were on the Switch, or the PlayStation 4 or Xbox, many of the new players of Monster Hunter are used to playing with a controller that has two joysticks. And most people have no idea why this is such a convenient thing when playing Monster Hunter. You move with the left, and you turn the camera with the right. Sounds pretty simple, right? Almost every game in history has this sort of layout. But what if I tell you this wasn't always the case with Monster Hunter, particularly with the handheld installments? The PlayStation Portable and later the Nintendo 3DS only has one joystick on the left. Now obviously that's for character movement, but now you're left with the camera itself. Along with knowing where the monster is and positioning yourself, you definitely get a better feeling as to where you are spatially. Especially back then with the PlayStation Portable games where auto-locking the monster did not exist yet until Free Ultimate. So what now? Your right is only left with the action buttons and everything else feels confusing. But you do have a solution. A rather uncomfortable solution, but it's better than nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the claw. A quintessential technique known too well by any true veteran of the series, and one that is now lost to the sands of time at the end of the PlayStation Portable era. So what is the claw? Well, since you can't move the camera with your right, you gotta function every movement with your left. The camera relies on the directional pad, and unfortunately it's on the left side of both the PlayStation Portable and the 3DS. Of course, your left thumb will be preoccupied with the joystick to move around your character, so your only options are to use the rest of your left fingers to use the D-pad to move the camera. A more common way of doing this is putting your index finger in a hook shape and laying onto the D-pad to press the buttons. This, my friends, is a one-way ticket to carpal tunnel, and maybe even some sore hands, I mean honestly. Just the way it looks is utterly cursed. It's completely awkward, during long hours of play it becomes really strenuous, and honestly all the respect to the OGs of the series that put thousands of hours into games like Freedom Unite and Portable 3rd playing like this. Now, don't worry though. The art of the claw is not your only option in moving the camera. If you're quick enough, you can spam the L button over and over to know where the monster is. Or if you're really good, you just don't bother moving the camera at all and simply position yourself better in the area. For me, playing back then felt like driving a tank. Move the character first, then move the camera to focus on the target. That was until I saw the claw. And about an hour into using the claw, it felt like something with my hands are about to snap, and it wasn't the console. Quite honestly, something like the claw has been ingrained into the mythos of old school Monster Hunter. On top of the unforgiving nature of the old games along with that classic G-rank grind and difficulty, this cursed technique to just operate the game definitely adds to the charm of playing these old titles, and it does give off a sense of identity when you think of the games like Freedom Unites or Portable 3rd. J just try and ignore that feeling on your left hand though, it's, it's only a trapped nerve. Although, from what I can remember back then, there was some mitigations to not use the claw. First off, the PlayStation Portable wouldn't really have some sort of attachment that adds another joystick, and people will have to wait until the release of the Vita. However, the 3DS did at least gave some options. Both 3U and 4U had customizations options with the touchscreen that lets you add a second D-pad to move the camera, and if you really want a better experience, there is the Circle Pad Pro, which makes life so much easier for people. 
Plus, both games had the target lock feature if you prefer that method of tracking monsters. All in all, veteran Monster Hunter players were just a different breed back in the day, having to deal with the jankiness of playing handheld console era Monster Hunter, and willingly using the most unpleasant method of using the D-pad. It's utterly amazing now that I think about it, and hopefully you or everyone else wouldn't have to experience something like this ever again. By the way, the footage you are seeing right now is of course me trying out this ancient technique on Portable 3rd. I changed the controller on the PPSSPP so that the right joystick is completely useless. And to be fair, it's honestly not as bad as it looks. But obviously doing this for hours on end is not really something anyone should do. But I wouldn't completely say to avoid it entirely. Listen, if the older generation of Monster Hunter fans can put up with something like this, then new fans of Monster Hunter should definitely give the claw a go. To really feel how the vets of the past had to go through, put yourselves in their shoes and be grateful to how far this series has changed. Just make sure to ease your left hand a bit. I feel like it helps slow the pain. But only a little bit though. Also, before I end the video, my last video on House of the Dragon was completely vaporized off the face of the earth. Well, it didn't get removed or anything. It just got hit with a copyright strike. And to be fair, I didn't do myself any favors by adding in clips from the show, so that's completely by my doing. So this all basically means that my House of the Dragon video is not really recommended by anyone, including my subscribers. But if you are interested in seeing that video or if you just missed it, then go ahead and watch it now, because time will only tell if HBO or YouTube goes ahead and completely removes the video altogether. And I really don't have the time to dispute that. Because honestly, I completely understand why. Just look at the way I edited that video. So, with that out of the way, I wish you all the best. I will be covering the third title update for Sunbreak this week, and maybe I might even try using the claw on Chaotic Gormagawa. So stay tuned.